In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some really cute shelf sitters for your tiered tray out of some scrap wood and some printables from printercrafts.com. And I'm going to show you what to do when things go wrong, as they sometimes do. So let's get into it. As I said, you'll need some printables and some scrap wood. These printables are printed on laser. These are from printercrafts.com, the December 2022 version, which is available till January 2023. And the image is reversed for the shelf sitter because of the technique that we're going to use. Because of this, we don't need a Cricut and we don't need any stencils. First, we're just going to paint our wooden, si our wooden shelf sitters with some basic craft white acrylic paint. I'm choosing to put that knot down on the bottom. I'm painting this upside down. You can paint one or two coats, as many as you like. I'm going to paint two coats on this because I want a more solid look. The only things that you need to know is that you need to use white paint for this because wherever it's white on your printable, the white paint is going to be the white for that. The printer ink does not actually print white. It only it prints all the other colors but that. So we just finish up the second coat of paint here and we let it thoroughly dry. Now to get a really smooth surface, we're going to use some brown paper bag to give it a light sand. So just cut up some brown paper bag and sand on your wood with the grain. This just gives you a very smooth surface to work on. Now we're going to take our reverse image printables and like I said these are printed on laser so make sure that you're using laser not inkjet. The inkjet won't work and I'm going to cut one of them out that I want and I'm leaving a space so that I can fold it over and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So don't cut very close to the design. There's a little trick for this. Okay, here we go. We're just going to fold that edge over and you're going to see in a second that I'm folding it this way and then I'm going to flip it over and fold it the other way. But right now I'm just folding it over close to the design, but not right on the design. This is just going to give you a little bit of a handle to help pull up the paper when we are removing it from the wood. Once that's done, we're just going to take some white paint again and now we're going to put a really decent coat of white paint on there. You want this to be fairly thick, but you don't want little ridges, so you need to use a brush to just smooth it out. Go in both directions to make sure everything is covered. Wherever that transfer is going to go, you need to make sure that is wet. Now we're going to place our image, but wait a minute. Oh, we need our image face down, not face up. So take it, flip it over, and make sure that you have your image folded like this so that it is face up. See, I told you things went wrong. Now that it is folded in the right direction, we can place it face down against the paint. Just make sure it's facing the right direction on your sign before you do that. Okay, face down, the correct direction. I'm going to add a little more paint just because it may have dried there a minute ago, so I'm going to just... Too much. You can't have too much of this. As long as you have the edges nice and smooth, it's not going to matter. Just wherever your image is going to touch the, the wood, you need to have this to be wet right now and fairly thick. All right, let's place that image down into the wet paint. This is what's going to hold the laser image is the actual wet paint. It's going to embed the laser image, which is why it needed to be reversed. Now gently press it down and then grab the back of a kitchen spoon or something like that that's rounded and not sharp because this is going to be damp and burnish it down into that paint so you know it's really stuck in there. This is why we left the edges up so we'll be able to remove that later without them being buried in the in the paint. So just burnish it down but be careful it's going to start getting soft because it's getting wet so don't rub too hard. You just want to make sure there's no bubbles and everything is touching that paint. Now walk away and let it sit for 24 hours before you try this next part. Once it's sat for 24 hours, come back with some warm or tepid water and just use your fingers to get that wet. Now that it's wet and soft, you can start to pull away gently. You're not trying to rip the whole thing off. You're just trying to get as much layers off as you can. Just start to pull away some of the pieces and you'll notice that not all of it is perfect. That's okay. This is a very rustic look and it really lends itself to this. So see how it comes off? Now there's a bit there that didn't actually get adhered down with the spoon, but I'm okay with that. 
So now you just take your fingers. I like to do this with my fingers. Some people prefer a sponge and gently wet and rub till you get these little pieces of paper rolling off. And you just continue to do this until you get most, if not all the paper off. You can do this quite a bit, but I will warn you that it does like to, if you go too far and get too aggressive, it will pay, take the ink right off too. It's just gently embedded into that paint. However, again, this is a rustic look, so we're okay with that. You'll notice I got a big chunk went missing and I'm fine with that because I want this sign to look a little bit old and a little bit worn and not like it's brand new. And I did the snowman face in exactly the same way. Burnish it down, then wet it. And you can see the image starts to show through when it gets wet enough. And then you can start to take that paper off. So there I, I am starting to take the paper off. And there's a few little issues that go wrong with this. But that's okay. So a little bit of his eye came off there. But I have a plan for this just in case. And I just want to show you that, see, look, his, his mouth was not perfectly adhered. Now, I could be freaking out right now, but I'm not going to. I know we're smart. We can fix this. We just have to figure out a way. So that's a bit of paint there that's a bit rough, and I'm just using my nail to scrape it off because, you know, I'll do me, guys. You do you, right? And then start to, like I did with the other one, take the water and start rubbing that as much of that paper off as you can, and you'll start to see the image come through. Uh oh see, I lost a bit of his mouth there. That's okay. Rustic. Rustic is very forgiving and we can really make this work. We have ways to fix it, which I will show you in a minute. So since he lost a bit of his mouth, I thought I'd get a little crazy and I grabbed our friend, the black Sharpie. Oh, not the small one, but the big one. And I'm going to outline the black, black mouth and eye with the Sharpie. And I think that's gonna fix my problem. So just overlining the eye here. And then I'm going to go in and just draw in that mouth again with the black Sharpie, fill it in, and I'm happy with the results. Something else I like to do is use really rough sandpaper. This is 100 grit and sand the edges and the corners of any of my projects to make them look more rustic. So just the edges and the corners. Don't use the sandpaper to sand over that printable or you will wind up sanding it right off. And as much as we like rustic, that's probably not the look you're going for. So I just use the sandpaper and like I said, I work the edges and the corners. You can paint this. There's so many ways to make it look rustic, but this is a quick and easy way just to make it look a little more beat up. And now that I've got that done, I want to make a little hat for my, my snowman. So I'm going to use some old scarf from the Dollar Tree. I've used this for lots of other projects. It's a not a flannel, a micro fleece. And I'm just going to cut a piece that's going to be the size of his head, basically, to make us, my, myself a little hat. So there we go, just cutting off the piece. And I'm going to use those that end bit, the uh, little tails there for the top of the hat. So I'm just taking advantage of the way that the thing is already made. So I've cut it the width of the scarf and I'm just going to roll up this edge and turn it into what will be the brim of his hat, basically. So I'm just gonna use hot glue for this, guys. This is not uh, doesn't need to be weatherproof. So I'm gonna roll the edge over, then place some hot glue, roll it again, and that's gonna be the beginnings of my hat. Now that that's done and the, the glue is dried and the little glue bits are off, I'm just going to take it and wrap it around his little head and place it like a hat. So we're just measuring for size now. There we go. Perfect. And I'm going to trim a little off in the back in a minute. I just want to see, do I want it top uh, a little higher, a little lower? You decide. And then I'm going to use the hot glue again and I'm going to glue one side. And then I'm going to glue the other side over. Well, I'm going to measure it first. I don't want it to go all the way back around, so I'm going to trim it off a bit. Then I'm just going to glue it down. There we go. And that is the beginning of his hat. 
Now I'm going to take some twine, which I think every farmhouse crafter has hanging around, and I'm going to grab a generous 12 inches maybe, wrap it around the top of the block, and then I'm going to tie this in, not a knot yet, but I'm just going to tie it so I can get it to turn into a little toque, as we say in Canada, or a beanie, however you want to say it. So we're just adjusting to get his little hat, and then I'm going to tie a, a tiny little ribbon or a tiny little bow here out of the twine. And there we go. I think he's got a super cute little hat. There we Super easy, super cute. What can I say? I love an easy craft. It has a great result. So now I'm just going to take these ends and I'm going to trim them down with this, my scissors just to make the, what his tassel or whatever you, pom-pom on the top or whatever you want to call it, a little shorter. I think it's a little cuter now, but you do you and I'll do me. This is how it works. Every one of us is going to have a different looking result at the end, but every one of us is going to have something unique and personal to us. And there you go. He is ready to go. Now, something I like to do to almost all my farmhouse crafts is take a whole bunch of twine and tie it somewhere on the craft. So around the bottom or around the sides. I think it really just adds to that rustic effect. So I'm taking a long piece of twine here and I'm going to glue it to the back or you can staple it or whatever you want to do. Then I'm going to wrap it around and around roughly with no rhyme or reason, not trying to be too particular about it so that you can see what I mean in a second. Glue that closed and I think you have a really cute finishing touch for your snowman to sit on the shelf. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these super cute reverse image hot chocolate stand tchotchkes. And I'm also going to show you what, goes, what happens when things go wrong and what you can do about it. There now. Wasn't that easy? And remember, you don't need a stencil or a Cricut. You can grab the printables from printercrafts.com until the 14th of January 2023. After that, this design will no longer be available, but there'll be a new bundle in there as there's a new bundle every single month over there. To see what else you can do with printable projects, click on the cards you see. We have plenty. If you enjoyed this video, would you consider liking and subscribing, please? Thanks. Bye for now.